Hello, hello everyone! Welcome to another video! My name is Alexa, and today, this video is a very special one, as this is the one year anniversary special! Well, the first of the two videos celebrating this. <laughs> Ever since around episode 6 of Dispenser Camp, Ellie was my personal favorite, and this has continued for around a year that I've done this channel. One of the most popular questions over the time I've been doing YouTube is why is she is my personal favorite character? So, here's a video to explain. Before this fully begins, a few things to note. Background footage is owned not by me, it is owned by Audition Cartoons, as well as Ellie's character. This is just my personal analysis slash opinions of Ellie. If you have different than that, that is completely fine. Credits for the Ellie scene packs as used in this videos are from the following creators, Raven3NZ and Don S CC. Thank you for creating these! Speaking of credits, thank you to Ellie and Gabby for this video suggestion. For my videos, I do sections for organization and simplicity. The sections for this video are the season 1 Ellie analysis, the season 3 Ellie analysis, the reasons why, such overall thoughts on Ellie, and the conclusion. I'm doing character analysis as well with Ellie because I feel like it better explains the points I make when I do the reasons why section. Alrighty, without further delay, on to the first section of the video. Dealing with Jake should count as community service. And Tom's no better. I mean, the guy's an idiot. Who goes on to reality TV as a spy? For this, I'll be going over Primer Jelly, Merge Jelly, Finale Ellie, and then a quick summary of Ellie this season. Glamour's Ellie episodes 1 through 7. Ellie doesn't get too much screen time at the very beginning of the season, however, enough to understand and gauge her introduction slash personality. Episodes 1 through 3 showcase her more laid back slash chill, quiet, introverted nature, additionally her kindness and intelligence, somewhat noticing the fact that she and Alec were outcasted and planning around that. Her dynamic with Gabby is also developed, and though we didn't get the chance much to focus on Ellie's side, it's clear she views Gabby as pretty cool slash curious about her confessional and how she reacts to being told Gabby would slash use the totem to give to her if she needed it. We also learn her fear of sharks, it's always nice to learn some extra facts about characters, and she is also shown as a team player throughout, focusing on challenges slash cheering on teammates, Ashley specifically throughout. Up until this point, Ellie has been more of a push to the side character, not getting much screen time. That was about to change in the next few episodes a bit. Episodes 4 through 6 begin giving Ellie both focus, screen time, and her development towards becoming morally gray, as well as giving her more of a character. Episode 4 focuses on her base backstory and introducing her to working with Fiore along with Alec, which would be very important for later on. Revealing that Ellie has been working two jobs, I wonder if she was still working as a barista and waitress back then whatever, <laughs> just to barely keep herself afloat, and her dream becoming a fashion designer or rather being able to get into fashion school to become a fashion designer. Revealing this extremely early on into the season I really appreciate since it makes Ellie relievable from the beginning, instead of being brought up right as she goes to the morally gray slash villain and seeming like it's just an excuse for everything she does. It also reveals why she got into the show in the first place, which is always a plus on my side. <laughs> she votes with Nick with the other two, being Fury and Alec. Episode 5 is the start of the foreshadowing to show she is willing to play on the more strategic slash quote-unquote dirty side. Being in the power position due to the 2v2 going on in her team, she decides to vote off Lula and Ashley, since Fiori could be an asset come merge, also showcasing more of her playing ahead skills, and showcases she's willing to keep the villains in if it benefits her. Anyways. Episode 6 is Ellie's fake out elimination scare, where it showed how she is willing to lie to other spaces. Fun fact, up until this point, Ellie has actually not really lied to anyone for anything, at least directly or shown anywhere on the show. She lies to Alec about how she would do the same if she was in his position, which she wouldn't. Otherwise, she also talks a bit with Gabby, saying that she is really proud of her, and also denying to have the totem. Personally, I think Ellie would have actually taken the totem from the past few episodes, but she needed to not take it for plot reasons, so whatever, it's fine. Then she goes up to Alec, expecting that he would be voting for Fiore. I mean, they were allies since the beginning, and plus, how are you going to win challenges with Fiore around? Doesn't seem too possible, right? Well, Alec decides to vote with Fiore due to starting to view Fiore as closer slash as a daughter in a sense, with Ellie shocked at the betrayal. This is the first betrayal of many and will be a very important for how she develops later on. 
Episode 7 is where she goes onto the Teal team, welcome back into the game, given another life saving chance, and her being extremely happy because of it. Welcome by Gabby onto the team, side thing, but the way Gabby is so much happier and carried the team so much more when Ellie was there, I just, yes. And also begins another important thing to her arc, her friendship with Jake, which begins and grows this episode with her helping him out and showing her kindness can be there at times. Also with Gabby, where she says she can tell her anything. Ellie also double asked to make sure Gabby really wants to use her idol on her. I mean, it is Gabby's after all. Which, when she confirms, she truly shows gratefulness, and Dan is just annoyed. And honestly, if I was in a spot and just lost a million dollars because of this, I would be too, so that's kind of a mood. This wraps up Ellie's pre merge journey, and with a lot of foreshadowing and aspects towards the villain arc, while still giving her an enjoyment with her dynamics like Gabby and Alec. Every single one of these episodes give a piece of the puzzle to Ellie's overall morally great and villain arc. Episodes 1 through 3 show her introduction, episode 4 shows her initiation, episode 5 shows her strategic willingness, and episode 6 the first betrayal leading to more towards a dark path and lying, and episode 7 the Jake friendship, social bonds, and how Outcaster 2 really is from the entire team, which also plays into a key role later on in the merge. Episodes 8 and 9 are the only merge episodes where she is not on the more morally great side, and instead is the final p puzzle pieces to make the arc work. Episode 8 begins right off where it shows Ellie's willingness to forgive others if it was a game or strategic move. That's what she views this as, a game, which is important for later on, especially in this Petra Cat Ball Stars. Her happiness and kindness with Gabby is given a huge focus here as she constantly smiles with her, it's just a sweetheart and it's just, oh my gosh. Her friendship with Jake is also shown here, as though Gret having immunity makes them unable to vote together because they're on separate sides regardless, they agree to continue being friends afterward, which is also important. Alec blindsided Ellie for the second time, doing so by voting off Gabby, saying that with Gabby gone, Ellie will come running to them. He has realized that Ellie can count the 6-2 to two votes in Gabby's elimination, right? Um, Gabby's elimination serves multiple important parts to Ellie's arc. Another betrayal, even when on the right path, showing that she can't trust many and also influencing that come to Special Cup All Stars. Gabby would try to stop Ellie from going down the darker path. With Gabby gone, well, now that can't happen. She has someone to avenge, adding more fuel to the fire. She went to Ally with the grandma and grandson's yeah. alliance, allowing her to further those dynamics so it's harder for the betrayal in Act 10 and also makes it hit a bit harder. And as much as I wish she stayed longer, this allows the very ending parts to her arc to be finished so it hits well in Episode 10. When I say who I wish stayed longer, I meant Gabby. <laughs> so... Episode 9, she doesn't really get much screen time due to going first ASAP in the zombie apocalypse thing. Her and Miriam build a friendship, so does her and Tom, and she also continues building one with Jake. And as stated before, this is important because it makes the betrayal in episode 10 hit all the more harder because in the end, she did care, but she had to do this. And also, she asks about the vote where her and Tom go for Gret and their expressions when Gret is eliminated. Look, if they didn't fight 24-7, they could have been such a power duo. Episode 8 is Gabby's elimination domino effect, and episode 9 is the development of the friendships to make the betrayal hit harder again in episode 10. Episode 10 starts with her group eating muffins, showing they've all grown at least somewhat close. Alec greets her excited, telling her what will happen as soon as those two are gone. She states the thought had crossed her mind, but this conversation in particular sparks her to begin continuing to this to think about this, the future of the game and her position within it. This is highlighted even further when the challenge begins and Tom tells her he is finding a totem. This is pushes her to the brink. As previously stated, she needs this money more than anything. Yes, she cares fully and doesn't want to go down this path, but if it's required to win the money, she'll do it. She goes up to Alec and Fiore because of this, asking how they could vote together, and wouldn't it just end in a tie? Alex and Fiore tell her and say there's another way, if she lies to Jake about Tom and uses that to get the votes on their side. She is clearly very against this, not wanting to do any of this at all. Whether it be direct statements, expressions, this wasn't what she wanted to do, she didn't have to, but that was the reality. She became what she was, not for emotion, but because strategy required it. There was no other option except to get fourth place, and that's not what anyone came here to do. She couldn't have stolen the ice, and that in reality was the only other way, I would say, to really avoid a tie and guarantee her safety. Maybe there is other ways, but I just, I can't really think of them.
At elimination, she prevents Tom and Jake from talking as Fiore exposes everything, causing Ellie to be exposed as she asks what she's even doing. She apologizes when confronted, and, and that's where this episode Ellie ends. It hits so well and works so well because in the end, every piece was built to make it work. It's in character. It just fits. Episode 11, Ellie opens to her and Jake fighting while Ellie continues to try and show remorse by apologizing, but also sticking her ground if needed in the fight. She states she doesn't trust anyone as she finally gets mad with Fiore and Alec. And after the two betrayals and Alec trying to remember her of what they used to be and allies and stuff like that, she decides to help him, only to leave him on the other side after using rope as revenge. This is where she starts to play dirty, and why? Because ultimately, it's basically the only gameplay that's benefited her fully. More on this later though. She finds Jake by accident as he falls on her and she asks if he's alright and how can she help, etc. Jake refuses instantly for obvious reasons and that's completely justified. But the scorpion comes and as it almost attacks Jake, Ellie throws her flashlight to save him, saying for them to go. This gives an extra level of my respect to Ellie because the people she gets compared to, we will not mention Allie here, she's a ripoff and wishes she was okay. She didn't leave someone to die, she did the opposite. Jake rants to her for an ungiven amount of time. My personal prediction was hours due to how the reaction of how long the challenge took and how the game seemed pretty big. Regardless, it's enough to push Ellie to her limits and she pushes him and makes her speech, which is a bit in the moment and says a lot of things. Though, I'd like to focus on a few uh, certain things. First off, uh, she wishes for him to die right after she saved him, so that... Um, Again, I do think a lot of this was more in the moment, but even still, I consider some of what she said out of character, but I guess that can all be given to the fact that it's very in the moment, she was just really frustrated and she finally could win and Jake tried to manipulate her quote unquote, so yeah. We then move on to episode 12, Ellie, where she's kind of just sitting alone and her letter from home is bills. I just... Does she pay her parents' bills too? Is that why she's so broke? Miriam and Ellie then begin talking, as well as Miriam saying that they need to get on Alec for being the biggest threat in the game so far. She agrees, but she doesn't know how to get them out. I mean, Fiori and Alec are really close, right? We, Ellie and Alec get paired up for the duo team, and they are dominating the challenge as expected. But Miriam tells Ali she needs to begin to throw it, as Ali's worried that she'll get voted out in place. Because, I mean, again, Fury and Alec are extremely close. Miriam promises that that won't happen, and she'll make sure that won't happen. In the end, Ellie decides to trust her and begins throwing the challenge, again, showing her willingness to play dirty if required. While throwing the challenge, she convinces Alec to go down the pole, saying that she can hold on for a while. I think she actually could have won that part of the challenge, if she wasn't throwing, that is. As she gets off the pole, as Miriam and Fiore win, Miriam sticks to her promise and votes for Alec to be leaving. And Ellie, I mean, it's Alec to leave and Ellie to stay, as Fiore also does the same in a heartbreaking trial. In the end, Ellie manages to finally make the finale, which is where this all comes to a head. Ellie views Fiore and Miriam as lesser opponents, as well as being sad for what she'll be remembered for somewhat, but in a sense, she had to do what she had to do, and she doesn't fully regret it. She's reunited with Gabby as Drew and Alec are also rooting for her, and her and Gabby ultimately work together, becoming a duo for this challenge. This is the first time Ellie did not see something coming. She was now the biggest threat. She was the person Fiore and Miriam needed to worry about winning. So, Miriam and Fiore work together as again, due to being a duo. Last round, they now fully somewhat trust one another. Not much, but enough to be willing to make a truce for at least a short period of time. In the end, Fiore manages to betray Miriam so she can get to the front and manages to make the final two. Ellie and Miriam are in a tight foot race as Ellie had gone a bit behind after Gret sabotaged them multiple times. But in the end, it comes to a head when Miriam fakes a heart attack and Ellie, still wanting to be morally sound and still wanting to somehow choose the right path if she could, goes to see if Miriam's okay. But in the end, this backfires because Miriam faked it it was all a ruse, so Ellie could come check on her, using her last bit of sympathy, and making her lose the million dollars. This is where her character ends the season, 
with her being happy with Gabby, and that's a reward worth more than a million dollars, but in the end, wouldn't it have been nice to benefit off of that? But, in summary for Ellie this season, it started off as a really kind and nice individual and still having that there, but was forced to become what she did because strategic reasons and because she needed that money. She was willing to do what she needed to do to move on past that, making her a lot more interesting and easily my favorite. This is Adventure Camp Season 1 cast. And as shown in the analysis, she was written extremely well in my opinion. Everything just works with her, and I was really excited to see what they were doing for her in Dispatcher Camp All-Stars when I saw she was announced. Well, let's discuss this now, shall we? Dealing with Jake should count as community service. And Tom's no better. I mean, the guy's an idiot. Who goes on to reality TV as a spy? I'll begin this by discussing why Ellie went so far into villainy, as this is mainly why a lot of people grew to more so dislike her and view this season as a derailment rather than an improvement of her character. Afterwards, we'll go into Ellie's short yet impactful time in pre-merge, then her cameo slash mentions, then her many greetings, at least the highlights of them. From me, anyway. <laughs> Why did she go so into villain? This season, Ellie went from someone who could be considered more like Grey to someone who leans fully towards the villains. I mean, she was in the Villains Alliance for a reason. I think this happened for the following reasons. The what ifs. If she didn't stick around and check on Miriam, Gabby would have noticed the flag and she would have won. She would have gotten the million. She wouldn't have had to work again. She would be able to go into her dreams. Her and Gabby could live comfortably without having to worry. For two years, she had to think of this, reminded of how being morally good, doing something sympathetic ruined her chances. So, when she was given the invite for another chance after that, she didn't want to waste this opportunity. She wouldn't let herself make the same mistakes again, leading to my next point. Playing dirty always overall benefited her more and less for Gabby. We really think about it. Whenever Ellie played morally correct, unless you're Gabby, it never went well. Tried her best to play morally right in earlier episodes, got betrayed, and also fake eliminated. Tried to play morally right in the merge, got betrayed again, and was fourth in the alliance that she fixed, but she had to switch to a dirty playstyle to fix that position. Lying to Jake, throwing and manipulating the challenge of season 1, episode 12, the speech, yes, she lost, but if Alec didn't come, she would have won the challenge because of her episode 11 speech, and I'll give her some sort of a benefit. And even after this, she tried to stick to her morals with the Miriam move. However, as explained above, it wasn't real, and it overall just ruined her. If she had gone for the less moral route and left her again, she would have won. Other instances also show her trying to play morally sound, but in the end, it also just doesn't work her way. Moving on, her still desperation. Ellie is still desperate. I'd argue even more than beforehand to fix her life and get the money so she can finish her dreams in peace without having to constantly work, but again, also to allow her and Gabby to just be fine. Now, does this justify everything? Heck no, but it's an explanation for why she is still this way. Still, some actions for her even by Ellie's standards, but a little too far. Moving on to pre-merge Ellie, which are the episodes 1 through 8, the ones she competed in, robbed. Episode 1 begins with Ellie and Gabby sitting there as Ellie's just worried for all the old memories to just return, which, yes, I wish we were focused more on this, how she's just scared a bit about going back. I think it could have been interesting, but either way. Ellie then goes into the plane where she's annoyed that no one is greeting her as it's revealed that she decided to do post-game interviews. And oh my gosh, it's two minutes straight of her just roasting the entire cast. Honestly, hilarious. The only one I would be like, why is Ashley? I don't understand why Ashley was joining to this because like Ashley did nothing to her. But either way, I view these interviews as another way to get money as again, Ellie was desperate. If Ellie had said really nice things, like if she went on a rant about how amazing Gabby is, yeah, that's sweet, but she's not gonna get money from that. She has to be mean cutthroat in order to get the money, which I also think involved her, especially with how Miriam faked the heart attack. Why should she be nice if that's what she did to her would probably be her justification in her mind. A really interesting interaction happens between Ellie and Ashley as Ashley forgives her for the interviews and all. This literally never amounted to anything in Dispatch Camp All-Stars, but I do think it would have been extremely interesting if they decided to capitalize on this. 
Either way, Ellie immediately, when she hears of the $3 million prize, is like, give me the parachute, we're going. And her and Gabby hold hands as they go off and they're on the same team, which, yay. Episode two opens with them going onto the team with Ellie, kind of worried since um basically everyone hates her from the season one cast due to what she pulled there. Gabby then tries to cheer her up as Tom appears and then they begin to fight. Ellie and Tom bite for a bit as Gabby splits them up, and this basically continues throughout the episode. Ellie doesn't get much screen time here, but it's clear she likes to persist on the team because Tess is there, but she does not like the fact Tom is there, and she also works with Gabby and Tess through the challenge, and Hunter attacks Ellie just to get a bird. I don't know when Ellie became so strong as to carry a crocodile, but I'm not going to question it much. Ellie in episode 3 doesn't really do much until the challenge, except she glances over at Gabby right before the challenge begins, and they're just, they're just sweeties, okay? They're just, yes. <laughs> Ellie then says for the girls to go together, as she also asks for them to pick a girls' alliance between her, Gabby, Tess, and Lake, saying that it would be a really fun idea. As well, as the girls work together throughout the rest of the challenge, and when Ellie sees Miriam, she is just not too happy. She fully believes when Miriam says that she's injured, it's another lie. Which, if Miriam actually did get injured this season and Ellie was the only one to help her, oh dear gosh, the boy who cried wolf coming to life. Anyways, Ellie turns out to be right, as turns out Miriam was faking it again to make sure that pink team was immune so Jake could be fine. And Cyan team loses due to this. After they lose, Ellie has an aha moment, shocked and realizing, oh crap, she can go home. She then decides that she needs to start targeting one specific threat on her team, Lake. Some argue that this might have been a little too early, which definitely that could be somewhat the case, but I like to think this is an absolutely great strategic move because Lake in the end is a threat. And has Aiden and Tess on her side. Because Tess is going to side with Lake and Aiden over Ellie and Gabby any day of the week due to how she's closer with Lake and Aiden, as shown later on, than she is with Ellie and Gabby in the end of it. If you want to hear my more in-depth opinion on this strategic move, I'd recommend you check out my episode 3 to Switch Camp All-Stars analysis. But in summary, she gets Lake eliminated and this is the true transition from her morally gray into somewhat villainy. She also uses a Fiori-esque move, one that resembles episode 10 specifically, where she first began going to a more morally gray side and also got betrayed. Okay, <laughs> this girl cannot catch a break when it comes to betrayal sometimes, I swear. This is also where Gabby begins to realize how competitive Ellie is getting and is not happy with this, as shown in the expression here. She's just not too glad and this carries over to future episodes. Episode 4, Ellie doesn't really do much except being invited to the Villains Alliance, which screws her over later on, but that's besides the point. Something I do want to highlight is how she actually somewhat stayed loyal to the Villains Alliance. Like, even though she was roped into it last minute, she still stuck with it. She didn't really betray the villains. She didn't really expose them. She didn't do anything to ruin them. So I find that extremely interesting. In the end, she wins the challenge due to Alec throwing it for her. And Gabby calls her her baddie. Gabby has seen too much internet, y'all. It goes to episode 5, where at the very beginning of the episode, it shows that Ellie does truly care for Gabby. She wanted to eat freckles, the chicken, but in the end she said her and Gabby could go get some fruit because she didn't want her to feel ostracized. It's rare to see her good side and it really only comes out with Gabby in the season, but overall it is there. It's existent. It's just very, very hidden. Speaking of, later in the episode, the letter finally gets to the Cyan team, and as it's revealed that the Villains Alliance exists and that Ellie is a part of it, Aiden and Tom fully believe it. She tries to defend herself, and Gabby joins her, but in the process, she lies to Gabby. This proves how much the game is getting to her, going to the point of lying to her own girlfriend of three years just for some strategy, just for the chance to win three million dollars. It's getting to her head, which Tess is beginning to notice, asking if she's alright, saying that she doesn't want to work, continue working her two jobs. In the end, Tess is starting to get really worried for her and also starts standing up for herself in a sense when it comes to Ellie. This is where this part, or at least this episode of Ellie, ends.
Moving on to episode six. This is where I would consider her actually being somewhat out of character. Ellie only does her villainous acts for a strategic purpose. She never really fully does it for the emotional. That's not what she's done in the past, but here she does it fully emotionally. From the beginning of the episode, she's a bit nicer to Tom, but just to keep herself to lay low as due to the Villains Alliance expose and wanting to keep her game straight. But then when it comes to the musical challenge, she is the one who comes up with the idea to make the two couples kiss at the very end of the song and that couple being Tom and Aiden and for no other reason to just the mess with Jake's head. Maybe there's a bit of strategic motive here, but it's really clear that it's strategic. It's mostly emotionally, which Ellie has literally never been shown to do. So if we're considering anything a crazy realm, I'm considering that movie it. Either way, though, since Ellie is responsible for making the Ellie and Gabby duet, I, I can't really get mad to a point because I love the Ellie and Gabby duet so much, so um, piggybacks a bot, by the way. Either way, that is where Ellie ends this episode with her just smirking at winning. She is really going into her villain era. Episode 7 is where the focus is more laid onto Gabby than anything else when it comes to this, as she finally learns that she was lied to. Which Ellie doesn't know yet, but she'll figure out very soon. Either way, Ellie just does another move this episode to where she tries to help in the challenge, but when she realizes they're gonna lose, she pushes Aiden onto Tom and is like, oh my gosh, get a room, you two, which causes Jake to be distracted and they manage to win as Ellie celebrates. Aiden's mad at her for the dirty trick she pulled, but she states that it made them win. In the end, she also has a confessional about how keeping Jake around is good because she he's gullible and predictable and easy to manipulate. All things that she could use to her advantage later on, which really proves how much this game is really getting into her head the second go round. She should not come back a third time. She'll be worse than this. <laughs> Episode 8 is where she gets a bit of focus in the morning, with Tess coming up to confront her as Gabby had asked her to do it since Gabby knows that Ellie can get competitive and really doesn't have the heart to confront her in the end. Tess confronts her saying that she knows she's lying and Ellie's reaction when she hears that Gabby knows that, that is wow, just wow. She's sad and we also get the iconic line of you're being so extra right now, Tess as well as being asked would she choose Gabby over $3 million, which Ellie thinks about for a second. Honestly, part of me thinks this is a more in the heat in the moment type thing, but anyways, I find it also kind of ironic how Jake is indirectly responsible for Ellie's elimination. When he learns of this, he's going to be celebrating up and down. Either way, in the end, Ellie goes over to Tess saying that they need to vote for Aiden this go round. He's gotta go. And also just being overall rude, not herself, which Tess notices and realizes that she needs to vote with Aiden and Tom so Ellie can go back to what she used to be. And also so her and Gabby's relationship doesn't go into more turmoil. In the end, at the very end of episode eight, she's given Mr. Whiskers and she tells Gabby to literally not trust anyone there because they're all looking the worst looking out the worst for her. Well, there goes Ellie's trust issues coming on out. Either way, Ellie apologized for what she did and saying that she would never make an alliance without her. In the end, Gabby forgives her and they have their happy ending. I do think it could have been interesting if they really played into the angst more, maybe allowing Ellie for some redemption. But in the end, I guess that was just not in the cards. Moving on to the cameos and mentions from episodes 9 to 14, since once Gabby's gone, no one cares about Ellie anymore. <laughs> Ellie is mentioned throughout episodes where Gabby is in, as she says her name pretty much every episode, making it clear she's doing this for her. Also, a few other characters reference her specifically, you'll regret. Episode 11 was especially a highlight for me with her. She not only let her chance for the combat to go gone just to help out Gabby, but she also gave her advice. There's all honor among thieves. Something that especially stands out to me is that Ellie has worked with them before, knows exactly what they're about, and is trying to make sure Gabby avoids the same thing that happened to her in season one. I, I just, I adore these two, y'all. They're just so, yes. I kind of wish we got to see this development of Ellie becoming more chill in the motel because I think it would have been really interesting to see it also because I believe in Ellie Redemption, but 
Moving otherwise, she obviously still has the upcoming motel episode in the finale, and she could do more depending. My guess is just more wholesome Ellie and Gabby content, and that's always a win in my books. Ellie Greetings. FYI, I have just not seen every single Ellie Greeting out there. There's only so many that YouTube has recommended me, and I'm not going out of my way to double search for Ellie Greetings all the time. The ones that interest me the most, the constant support and shown point of view that she truly adores and loves Gabby in many greetings. She doesn't hate Jake, rather likes to make fun of how immature and stupid he is at times. She secretly was rooting for Alec for a short period, might be reset in the following episodes, but still I find it interesting that even after everything, she's still somewhat rooting for Alec. Dang. She forgave Tess and thinks she did the right choice of a role. Or rather, she would have done more to ease Tess' nerves. Confirmed her two jobs as a barista and waitress not by choice. As well as Gabby moving to New York City to be with her again. And also, some of the people who design our fan arts in this community made some incredible Ellie designs that are shown in these greetings. It's just, it's stunning. Now, we can move on to the reasons why and my personal overall thoughts on Ellie. Dealing with Jake should count as community service. And Tom's no better. I mean, the guy's an idiot. Who goes on to reality TV as a spy? Her dynamic with Gabby. What a shocker, this is the first reason. My favorite in the entire series. So wholesome, so sweet, so many subtle details, healthy, truly happy. I could go on and on with them, but I feel like the analysis itself also touched on them a lot. Overall, I think this is the best relationship Dispenser Camp has created, and in the end, just Yes. Why couldn't they get the spin off though? <laughs> Her morally great outlook in season one. It's rare to find just pure morally great characters from what I've watched recently. You're either the hero or the villain. It was nice to see a break from that here, even if it was just for season one. It made her that much more enjoyable to me and also added another layer to her character that could also just be in the very early season one is considered a one note. Now it's more. Her writing, at least in season one. As explained within the analysis, she had every piece of the puzzle she needed to, be, to hit a really good morally great arc and it works really well obviously some things she did in season three are questionable and might not make sense in her character but she still was fine for the most part i just like to highlight her writing in season one because dang that is really good in my opinion her desperation and willingness to fix her life she's always desperate and needs the money she's always willing to fix that it adds a flaw and a layer to her character to show her dedication and i respect that about her the fact that she's so hardworking and wanting to continue to fix her life no matter the cost i mean obviously some of the decisions she makes she probably sh she shouldn't <laughs> but in the end the fact she's willing to do that it's interesting the fact she interacts with everybody. Most of the time, characters only interact with like a few char other characters and that's the end of it. Ellie, on the other hand, interacts with basically everybody, whether that be everybody on her team, whether that be everybody in the merch. She has interacted with, let me just list this, Gabby, Jake, Tom, Miriam, Fiore, Alec, Tess, Lake, Aiden, Rhea, Gret, and though not shown on screen, confirmed in some greetings, she has also interacted with Kai, Maggie, and Drew. Therefore, this girl has interacted with like 15 people in total, and that's extremely impressive, and I think it really adds that much more. And all have, most of them anyway, have an established dynamic that is built, whether that be rivalry, friends, or whatever else. And I think she has some of the most interactions in the entire cast, and that just, yes, I forgot Ashley! <laughs> Anyways, she isn't always the quote-unquote villain in her remorse in season one wise. Yeah, it's always great to see a villain. I'm a villain fan at times, y'all. But the fact that she always felt remorse for what she did, the fact that she is literally the only one of like this kind of arc in the series to not go and try to get um, someone killed, it just adds so much more to her in my opinion. She's remorseful even if it was just for one season. It was nice to see that and just see how much she regretted it. It added another layer and made it all the better to me anyway. Her comedy. Though Ellie's character isn't meant to be one fully focused on the comedy, she can be extremely funny at times. More so season three. Like those interviews were gold mines. I have a bias towards more sarcastic slash insulting type char comedy characters and she provided it within this. The strategy. Ellie's main part of her arc in Switch is her sh overall strategy in the end. And even in season three, she had all that strategy and it was really interesting and nice to see. Even if she went a bit far at times, 
I always appreciate the strategy in this game because I'm a Survivor fan, and one of the main reasons I got into Dual Drama and Disadventure Camp was the strategy. And it's always nice to see a character that's more focused on the strategy than it is the emotional, and still having those emotional moments at the core. Or loyalty sometimes. Yeah, Ellie is never that loyal to some things, but she can be loyal when she wants to be. An example, again, is the Vaughn's Alliance, her dedication to Gabby, etc, etc. And when she is loyal, it's really interesting to see that in the- to me anyway. The factor changes natural, at least in season one. A few of the other changes that have happened with others trying to re replicate this arc has not gone as well. Whether that be Allie and the Switch Camp All-Stars being a lot more sudden and just not feeling natural, or whether that be Rhea as well, it somewhat doesn't feel that natural. In the end, Ellie would be the number one I would consider natural, and I really do appreciate that. It just shows her writing was good, and that I just really enjoyed her. The faction needs the money. I know this is an interesting point, but I always lean towards the people to root for that actually need the money in the end. In the end, this is all a game to win the money. Nothing more, nothing less at times. Therefore, whenever someone actually comes into the show that needs the money, not just for the reason, oh, oh, having more money would be nice, I always tend to lean to their side because, I mean, they actually need it. They come onto the show to get what they needed to fix it. And just ultimately, it makes it better. Her potential. Alali has a lot of potential, and especially in Stretch Camp All-Stars. Even though some of it, I would say, was not utilized to its fullest, the ones that were really worked well at times. <laughs> She's always had a bit of potential, and I say every character has potential. They always do, but I consider hers to have a decent amount at the end. My overall thoughts, Ellie is easily my favorite Disadventure Camp character. The only one that comes close, <laughs> in a sense, is Gabby, for all the reasons before listed, and again, her character analysis. Moving on to the conclusion. Dealing with Jake should count as community service. And Tom's no better. I mean, the guy's an idiot. Who goes on to reality TV as a spy? And there we have it, another way too long video dedicated to Ellie Parker. In any case, what are your thoughts on Ellie? I would love to read in the comments down below. Thanks so much for watching this video and the support. Being able to do YouTube for a year has been insane and it's been a wild ride. So thanks to every single one of you watching or any support that you have shown this channel. Even as a first time viewer, it really does mean the world to me. Anyways, have an amazing day slash night and I hope to see you again on the channel.